Hey guys, welcome to The Gun Shop with me, John. Today, we're gonna to be doing a little comparison between this, the 80 Arms SP Sporter, and this, the Coffs Scepter SXE. To start with, we're gonna have a little look at some physical dimensions on the board behind us. We're gonna reference back to this when we got these two side by side, and a lot of it should start to make a bit more sense than just numbers on the board. First, stock length, identical. Cast off, the Coffs has a quarter inch give or take of cast off. Actually, it's a bit more like 3 8 on that gun. However, having looked over a number of guns, it does vary ever so slightly. The ATA has negative cast off. It has cast on of an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Some people call that left-handed, but they still call it right-handed because it's got right pitch. Drop a comb, 32 and versus 36. And in fact, the whole stock is four mil higher on the coughs than it is on the ATA. The action depth, 65 versus 60, 64. The actions are the same depth. The action width, 41 versus 45. The ATA is four mil thicker in the action, but that's only at the back. At the front, it's actually 41 as well. Or oh, I'm sorry, it's 42, that's by the way. The forearm depth was an interesting comparison because as we'll see, they're quite different. The forearm depth is 67 versus 73. That's six mil. That's, I mean, that's a good quarter of an inch of depth difference and is two mil wider. So overall it's just significantly bigger on the ATA than it is the Coffs. Weight is the single biggest difference between them because the Coffs is six pound eight and the ATA is seven pound 10 or 2.95 kilos versus 3.45, four, seven kilos. There is a big difference. Anyway, that's enough of numbers. We will come back to these, but let's look at these in the flesh. So in front of me, I have the bronze action ATA and the Coffs. I'm gonna start at the back and we're gonna have a little look as to what actually you get. So starting with the pads, the real difference in the pads, this is a Pacmire copy and this is not. Pad wise, this actually has more recoil reduction which is certainly softer than the Coffs and has this hard skeet section at the back. Both of them are surprisingly hand fitted so the fit is actually particularly good on both. Neither is better than the other but they are because the ATA one is, is in fact better. Moving on to the stocks, I genuinely think the line and finish of the Coff stock is superior to the ATA. The lines are straighter, the finish is better, and actually a little bit harder. You'll find with the ATA, if you don't put oil into it, they do wash out a little quicker than the coughs, but neither are perfect. The checkering, the checkering is tighter on the coughs and is indeed looser on the ATA. The coarser checkering has its positives and negatives. In practicality, it's probably better. In reality, neither is particularly great, but the coughs, I think, is too fine in the checkering by comparison. For the price point of the gun, just practicality wise. For what you want to use this gun for, you do want a little bit more, you know, a bit more grip like this one provides. The grips, the trigger to the bottom of the grip measurement on both is identical. However, in the hand, they feel completely different. Uh, this is for a, a multitude of reasons, mainly being that this depth here is a centimeter greater than this, this depth here. So actually what you get is something that fills your hand that little bit more. This really is designed for a smaller hand. What's more important again is that this cutaway here on the ATA is significantly deeper than it is on this. So this again is just a more comfortable gun to hold. I've got fairly average size hands and to be fair I do find this quite a small grip to hold on the coughs. It's not bad and in fact probably actually feels a little bit more balanced. It feels the hand better just in the shape and radius whereas on the ATA you, you feel like you're missing a palm swell because it flares so much at the bottom but you're not sort of, it doesn't feel like you're compromising so much with this ATA. It doesn't feel like you're compromising so much. Anyway, moving on. Trigger pulls on both are, are pretty average. There you go, I'm gonna leave it at that. It's really not a redeeming feature of either gun. Safety catch operation on both, again, very nice, very slick. In fact, I feel like the Coffs has a slightly nicer internal finish when it comes to the use of the safety catch and the top lever and such. In terms of opening and closing, the Coffs wins hands down. Such a smooth operating gun from the get-go, whereas the ATA feels like you've got more engagement. And that's generally because you do, because of the way the ejectors work and the forehand works and everything, that you can feel that engagement running through the gun, which, to be fair, I've no idea who that would bother, but it's something that you pick up. I mentioned about action width before, and that was the width on the ATA of here, and this has a flat action side with just the raised trunnions. What you'll see is that width doesn't actually run through the woodwork here because these flats here flare out quite as much as they do. So you lose a lot of that width running through the gun. However, the grip width is in fact two mil thicker than this. 
generally, we're gonna leave the grip alone. The grip on this is bigger, the grip on this is smaller. If you've got small hands, this will be better. If you've got large hands, this will be better. Wood quality. I've seen exceptional ones of each. They actually use a very different type. You'll rarely see the sort of hard fiddle back you see on the ATAs quite regularly on the coughs. However, you have better grain definition, generally speaking, on the coughs. But it's a mass generalization, makes absolutely no difference to the quality of the wood or the quality of the guns and handling. But there you go. Action material wise, both action materials are pretty poor. This is gonna be a softer alloy than this. It's a lighter alloy than this, and that is where the lightness of this gun comes in, which is also why this is particularly popular with those who don't want a heavy gun, purely because there, there is literally nothing to it, whereas this does have a little bit of actual mid-end weight. This really does not. The forend differs very much as well. That depth you can really feel throughout this ATA forend, and that's because you have this push button connection here, and then you have to have the depth to house all of that. The coughs is done on a standard pull lever forend. Uh, that isn't too bad, but well, it's a little bit pernickety. It's not particularly positive, and that's the best way to put it. It's not particularly positive. It is really well machined, however, and in fact, that's something you can say for the coughs, is it is just that little bit cleaner in the woodwork department than the ATA. The ATA is almost semi beaver tail and actually does lend itself to a, a more uniform grip. I suppose the depth, I really like it. It feels it feels like a Maruku and that kind of does it for me. It's got a little bit more about it. I like it and I feel like you could shoot it that little bit better. The scepter is just that much more elegant. It is not unpleasant in the hand and actually the width versus depth is probably the perfect ratio. Barrels wise, there's not a huge amount to choose between them. They're both nice barrels. The beads are interchangeable. The chokes are interchangeable. I feel like the ATA barrel is a slightly lower profile towards the choke end, but not particularly. I think a lot of that is just an illusion. Um, when you actually measure them, they are identical because they have this tapered inwardly rib, which is quite cute, actually. I like that. Before we go and take them apart and sort of look on the inside underneath all this gear, it is worth saying that the ATA does have superior trigger pulls to the coughs. I know they said they're both bad. The ATAs aren't too bad. The coughs is are are pretty bad um they do bed in really nicely the coughs but yeah you know that there, there is a slight downside all right let's pop them apart and have a little look what they look like in bits so starting with the forends and the forend irons internally the at has a two-piece forend iron uh, and they're not connected most forend irons are two-piece i should point out but this one has a two-piece iron that is connected this just feels a little bit more i don't know regular and this is probably one of the only things i really dislike about the ata is the fact that you know the 409 could have been a single piece and it wouldn't have made really any difference whatsoever to the gun apart from maybe half an ounce and making it stronger and better in every way but pff, hey uh, let's move on the barrels as you can see the ATA is very Beretta-esque in the way its barrels are put together the ejectors are put together the way it runs off its trunnions the way the ejectors run the way the barrels lock up is all very, very similar. The ATA barrels are heavier than the Coffs barrels. The Coffs barrels are bored 18.5, these are bored 18.3. This is all personal preference stuff. The finish on both is actually really very good. My only real downside with this is that four end loop. It's pretty tragic actually. Um, whereas this four end loop is just that little bit better. Just the way it will hold together, the way the draw works, and the way the four end attaches, just that little bit more regular. And there is a reason that most four end loops look regular is because that's the probably the correct way of building. Lockup wise, both have different lockup systems. This has that bottom loading bite with the two lumps that sit down into the action, a bit Browning-esque maybe. And this is obviously Beretta, very, very Beretta-esque with your two drawers here and your two locking lugs at the back there. Neither is wrong, neither is right. They're both good, they're both slightly different. The way they've managed to keep this as low profile as it is using that locking system is impressive. You can see in the bottom here, the two holes that these two logs are supposed to go into. Action comparison. A touch like the Beretta, you have these side cocking rods here. They work very well, they do work very well. And this, a touch like a Rizzini, perhaps has the two push rods at the bottom. Again, neither is wrong, neither is right. Um, they both have their positives and negatives. These are potentially easier to clean for an end user than these are, uh, but neither is, is particularly different. This whole system feels significantly heavier than this. Um, and that's about all I can say. Engraving wise, obviously this has none. Uh, and this has a very pleasant uh, etched looking finish on top of the alley. It's nice, it's pleasant. Um, if anything, this is perhaps more showy than the ATA, not the ATA doesn't do more exciting models. Before I put them back together, this is 500 pounds and this is 600 pounds. 
There's only 100 pounds in it. Um, sorry, it's also worth saying at this point that the cough scepter does have that little inlet on top of the aluminium action, whereas uh, this doesn't. Um, that said, this is made of a much sterner alloy uh, than this. This is a bit more buttery. Let's pop them together. When talking about these guns in this context, you can see why so many people struggle to choose which one is better. So I'm gonna give you three reasons to buy this and three reasons to buy that and I suppose it's up to you which reasons are more important. The first and most important thing with the Coffs is that it is lighter. If you're after a light gun, a game gun, a walked up gun, this really is the winner out of the two. There's not a lot more I can say about that. Secondly, the fit and finish of the Coffs is superior. The woodwork is nicer, the edges are nicer, the lines are better, and everything just is that little bit more nice, I suppose. That even leads all the way into the action. The action is prettier. I know that's not a great reason, but there's many guns sold on beauty alone, so the action is prettier, the woodwork is nicer. Third and finally, the forend is just that little bit slimmer. For those of you who don't like a deep fat forend, this will be a little bit more popular perhaps. Um, and that's pretty much all I can say for it. ATA time. In no particular order, number one reason for buying the ATA is that it just feels more substantial. The forehand is deeper, the grip is bigger, and that will make it outperform the coughs as a clay gun, pretty much hands down. Point number two is this, the action is more solid than the coughs. The metal is of better quality, the internals are much more muchness, but the trigger pull is, is in better. Yes, it doesn't feel quite so nice when you open and close it, but that really doesn't matter because you're gonna be doing this, shells in and slamming it up but I just feel like the action and barrel quality, no, not the barrel quality, but the action quality is superior. A point number three, and this really isn't to be underestimated, is that just about every ATA Arms owner believes that they have somehow undercut Beretta and got themselves a 600 pounds Beretta. It is okay if you believe that, but it is a lie. They are not the same. However, they are very nice. If you take them as a standalone gun, they are they are genuinely a brilliant thing. Finally, and before our conclusion, let's talk about balance and handling. The ATA is viciously front heavy. However, because it's so substantial in the hands, you feel like you have to kind of work it anyway. So it's not too bad. The coughs, the coughs again, is also front heavy. However, where it's so light, actually there is room for both of these, to be honest, for a little bit of rearward weight, just to help them handle that bit better. Whether you'd wanna do it to a gun that weighs, you know, practically nothing, would be up to you. In reality, they both handle very nicely. That coughs is viciously fast, whereas this ATA feels slow, but is fast and perhaps is a little bit less balanced all round in the way. At least you could shoot that coughs a little bit more honestly than this. I feel like this is gonna take that a little bit more work to shoot. Chuck a few ounces in the back maybe, and you'll be getting there. But there is something about this that does, doesn't feel like anything really. So conclusion, which one would I buy? And I'm guessing that's what most people want to know. Probably the ATA. This is beautiful, it's so refined in every way. However, if you bought one of these and whacked four or five ounces in the back and had it fitted, apart from the fact that it's got anti-cast, which is the stupidest thing about this gun, is that they've tilted their stock so much that it actually, it, it's almost left-handed when it comes up to your face. Sort that problem out, and it is actually really quite nice. That said, I would own this in a 28 bore over this. I'd own this in a 20 bore over this. And in fact, these in their smaller gauges really represent great value for money. They're nice, they're small, they're light. The small grip and the small stock and the small everything suddenly just makes that a bit more sense. I really like it. And at that sort of price point, if I was buying a 12 bore, I probably wouldn't buy it though. The real reality of it all, guys, is that if I went into the market with five or 600 quid to spend, I would buy neither of these. Um, and I suppose you kind of knew that already. But thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care, goodbye, and I'll see you next time. Hi, guys, welcome to the gun shop.